In the second part of this video series, we're going to deal with more complex conditional statements. In the first video, we said to Excel, if this is happening, if this condition is met, do this. Very simple. In this video, we're going to say to Excel, if the condition is met, do that. If the condition is not met, do this. So we're taking things to the next level, super powerful techniques. Let's get straight into the download file. You can download this file from the website, work along with me. So we've got our simple if statement here. And we're going to we're going to build on this code. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll copy paste this code to create a second routine. Now the name of this routine is going to be let's call it if else statement. There we go. If else statement. You can see I've recycled the code there. Recycling the code is often a good idea. It helps us to get things done quickly. So in this case, what do we want to do? Again, let's think conceptually in English about what we're trying to do. Let's describe it clearly. Then we can put it into code. Well, we want, um, if we're clicking on a cell and it says M, we want it to flash up, this is a man. If it's clicking on a cell, if we're clicking on a cell and it's not, M is not in the cell. So if the value in the selection is not M, then we want it to say, this is not a man. So very simple, this is a man, this is not a man. Now, we do have to change the structure a bit here. I'd say the number one problem, number one problem people have with if statements is this. If we're introducing an else command, which we're going to introduce here, now this changes the structure. Our fundamental, our fundamental uh, structure, if you like, our setup is if, else, and end if. Is if, else, and end if. We've got to bear this in mind. But you'll notice that the code, if the condition is met, I've moved that from the same line to the line below. If the setup was like this, then what's going to happen? What do you think is going to happen now? I've got if, else, and end if, but the code, if the condition is met, is on the same line here. So what's going to happen here? Let's try running the code. We can see Excel gives us an error message. It says else without if. It's not a particularly informative error message. What Excel is saying is if you're using else as we are here, then the code cannot be on the same line. The code has to be on the line below. Now this one, uh, this one should be fine. I'm going to qu quickly run the code. Step into the code with the F8 key. We can see Excel's got no problems uh, running it. So this is something to look out for. The syntax, if we're using if, else, end if, then the command has to be uh, on the next line. So this looks fine so far. So if the value in the cell is an M, then it's going to flash, off, flash up a message box saying this is a man. Let's put a button in the spreadsheet. Just going to copy this button down, use the Alt key to position it, and then edit the text. And let's say if else. There we go. So I've got a button here. I'm going to attach the, the new macro we've just created, if else statements. There we go. Attach that to the button. So Excel's now going to run uh, the code that we've just created, this if else statement. I'm going to click on it. And what's going to happen here? OK. This is a man. The selected cell has an M in. That makes sense. If there's an F in the selected cell, what happens? There's nothing happening there. Let's go to the code. I'm going to use the F8 key just to step through the code. So in this case, selection.value is F. So Excel's not going to go to this code. The condition is not met. So Excel's not going to go to this code. Excel's actually gone to the else section here. Excel saying, OK, this condition is not met. You want me to do something else? So we can tell Excel now exactly what we want to, uh, to happen. So let's just have a message box flagging up, uh, flashing up here saying this is not a map. There we go. OK, so what will we expect to happen now? Make the spacing consistent. Well, here we'd expect um, a message box to flash up even if it's an F or something else in the cell. That's what we'd expect. We've dealt with We've dealt with both situations. If there's an M in the cell, do this. If there's not an M in the cell, the else statement. If there's not an M in the cell, we want to do that. OK, so we've got an F here. There we go. This is not a man. That's what we would expect. We've got an M here. 
and this is a man. That's what we'd expect. So this seems to be uh, working pretty well. Okay, so we've got some code here and you've done a simple if statement and an if else statement. Super powerful techniques. These are really gonna help you uh, with your coding. But you might be thinking, well, hang on, uh, in real life, that's not really very useful. You know what, I'd agree with you. It's not particularly useful just to have message, box, message boxes flashing up because we can just look at the cells to understand the information in the cells. So let's take this uh, to the next level. Let's suppose we wanted to loop through the whole data set and count the number of men and count the number of people who are not men. Sorry to be a bit little male centric and, se and uh, sexist by the way, but it's just um, how I've set it up uh, in, in, in this particular video. Okay, so we wanna count the number of men and count the number of entries that are not men. We can see down here, the other entries are not just F, we've got other and no answer as well. So what tools are we gonna to need to do that? Again, let's think about it conceptually first, very important in coding to get it clear in your mind what you're trying to do before you try to do it. What tools are we gonna need? And it's some tools, if you look at the target um, YouTube channel a lot, you'll see me using these tools. Well, we want to repeat a certain thing. We wanna go through each line and check if it's a man or a woman. So we have a repeated action there. That means we're gonna use a loop, okay? Let's put a loop in the code. Let's put it around the conditional statement to repeat that conditional statement uh, many times. Okay, so we're gonna need a variable. Gonna need a variable first. You usually need to declare a variable in order to control a loop. Then we're gonna say for each Chris cell in, and now we're gonna specify the range that we want Excel to loop through. So what do we got here? So G8 to uh, G257 down at the bottom there. So G8 to G257. Uh, G8, so there we go, to G257. So we're saying to Excel now, we want you to do something to each cell in that range. Super powerful technique. And now we're going to close the loop uh, at the bottom here. And then uh, we say next Chris cell. So it's a good idea. There we go. Yeah, it's a good idea when you open up the loop, we've used a for next loop here. When you open up the loop, when you put the for command in, it's a good idea to close the loop uh, at the same time so that you don't forget to do it later. The next command, of course, should be the other side of the n sub. I thought that wasn't looking quite, quite right. Let's just put n sub in there. There we go. So we've got our for next loop here going to indent, going to indent the conditional statement here. That helps us understand it. So what's this going to do at the moment? Well, let's change um, selection.value to chriscell.value. And at the present time, it's going to loop through uh, these cells and just tell us if it's a man or a woman in the cell. So the first entry, this is not a man. Second entry, this is not a man. Third entry, this is not a man. The fourth entry, which is a man, uh, this is a man. So at the moment, it's just looping through the cells, going to that conditional statement, and then if something is happening, it's doing that. If something is not happening, it's doing that. So super powerful technique, but still not really doing anything for us yet. So let's suppose we want to count the number of men. In order to do that, I'll just create a little more room at the bottom here. In order to do that, uh, I'm gonna declare some variables. We need to count up the number of men, count up the number of non-men, uh, we're going to use variables to do that. A variable is just somewhere where we can store some information while we're running the code. So let's say number of men as integer, integer variable is appropriate here, and number non-men as integer two. So we've got two variables there. And then what do we want to happen here? If the cell is a man, then we want to increase the value of the number of men variable by one. We want to effectively increase the tally. How do we do that? So number of men equals number of men plus one. And then the same thing, uh, the other side of the conditional statement. So number of non-men equals number of non-men uh, plus one. There we go. 
And at this point, because I'm using variables now, I'm going to put option explicit at the top of the module. That's going to help me understand if there's any problems uh, with the variables. There we go. So what are we expecting to happen now? Well, we've got rid of the message boxes, so we're not going to have any message boxes flagging up. Instead, we've got these variables, and the variables are going to increase in value each time there's a man. The, the no men number of men variable is going to increase by one each time there's uh, each time there's a woman or not an M then the number of non men variable is going to increase by one at the end let's have a message box just telling us the number of men there we go this this syntax should work and then the number of women or the number of non-men, okay, and non-men. There we go. So just put together a message box at the end there. You can see we've used the variable name in the message box. So hopefully this message box is gonna flash up how many men, how many women. Okay, so I'm gonna step through this code quickly, see if everything looks okay. Everything looks okay so far. So I'm fairly confident I'm going to play the code here. Okay, we've got 117 men, 133 non-men. See the spacing there, the spacing on the message box, suboptimal, I would say. So let's uh, sort that out. There we go, 117 men, 133 non-men. Interesting. Interesting seems to be working, but do we know it's correct? Uh, we need to do testing in order to understand that, that the code is working properly. Good way to do testing is to do the same thing uh, a different way. So I'm just going to put, let's use these cells here and let's have an M and an F. Then I'm going to use count if here. Count if super powerful formula. Count if, so count if needs to know the range. Okay, we've got a range there. And then the criteria back up to the top here. The criteria is going to be M here. I'm going to, I'm not going to fix the criteria. There we go. Okay, just bring that formula down. Okay, interesting. Let's see, yeah, okay. Now this, this is interesting because we haven't got the result uh, we wanted, of course, because we've got 117 and 133. The men is right, 117. The F figure is not quite right, but what's happened here? Well, it's because there's entries that are not F. So we've got other We've got no answer. There we go. So let's just put these into other and no answer. And then just answer spelling. There we go. And then let's just bring these formulae down. There we go. And then what's the sum here? Is this 133? There we go. Yeah, if I just add these up here, then I can see the non-men figure non-men figure which consists of females others and no answers if you look down the database you'll see some people have said other some people have said no answer those do consist of 133 so when we run our code we have 117 133 when we do it with formulae we've also got 117 133 so that's the end of this video super powerful technique there so we've done a simple conditional statement in the first video more complex conditional statement using else in the second video, combine that with a loop to get a job done super quickly. In the third video, we're going to move on to more sophisticated conditional statement technique, which is using case select. This is going to allow us to look at multiple options, get Excel going in multiple different directions. I'll see you in the next video.